Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Man Cave 4301 podcast. I'm your host, Big Kev. We are back and we're going to be better than ever. So really excited to kick this back off again. Um, been away for a long time and now the room is set back up again. I cannot wait to pump some episodes out. Uh, it's going to be a bit of a format change. We're going to um, not just do mental health. Uh, we're going to do a whole bunch of different stuff. So we're going to go into health and we're going to go into whatever interests me. It's going to be a little bit of everything. So this page is going to expand, podcast is going to expand, and I'm really excited to get stuck back into it. So today our next guest is um, really excited to have her on. Um, she reached out to see if she wanted to do an episode and um, here we are. So uh, her name is Pavla. She is an energy healer. She lives in Melbourne. I want to thank her very much for coming on the podcast and a big warm welcome to Pavla. Thank you so much for having me on. What an honor and privilege to share some insights on healing and energy. Mm, thank yeah, you. It's really good to have you on. Um, can you give us a little bit of a rundown, the sort of the title of what you do, how long you've been doing it, and, and just a rundown of um, what it is you actually do. Okay, awesome. Thank you. So I am Pavla, uh, and I am a transformational energy healer. Um, I guess my journey started actually with um, the physical health, learning about our body and, you know, uh, for, I don't know, past 15, 18 years, I have been really diving deep into how can we heal ourselves with the gifts of mother nature you know foods uh, herbs spices how can we support our physical bodies and and really um go back to basics how we used to live so that that allowed me uh to really get the understanding of what's happening inside of this physical temple that we all have uh, I took it a bit deeper with studying aridology and sclerology, which is a science which helps us to understand, again, what's happening in the physical through our eyes. So we can take a picture of our eye and, and see where is this harmony inside of ourselves, which, which uh, bodily systems, you know, a digestive or, or a reproductive system, and how can we bring it into balance with herbs and spices without cutting ourselves open, without drinking radiation, kind of, you know, the, the, when you go and get the scans, you need to drink the radioactive substances and that type of stuff. So that's been absolutely beautiful. And then I learned with the, you know, the, the powerful way of healing is through fasting and just really giving our bodies a little bit of a rest. And from that, the awareness of the energy inside became so much stronger. My intuition, what I was able to feel into, became so much stronger. And then I went into a practice called quantum flow, which is a beautiful practice with movement and breath work and changing the awareness and intentions of our being. We can shift trauma on the physical level as well, rewiring the brain waves in our body, in our, in our mind, and, and, and shifting the build up stress and anxiety and anger, all these different emotions, blockages as well. And then when I finished this training, I kind of I had this fire in my hands and I'm like oh my goodness what's going on and <laughs> and 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 I um, got introduced to a neo shamanic healing society which I'm absolutely incredibly proud and and grateful member of and that's where I learned more about energy and really the structure of who we are how we operate how we navigate life and how we can support um, ourselves, my clients, coming back to a natural state of being, which is wellness, which is vitality, which is clarity of mind, which is peaceful heart. Um, and yeah, that's how it's been rolling. So I have created a, a private members association called Infinite Vitality. And from there, I'm just sharing my work. And I think more than ever, I, I think you agree as well, people are kind of needing to have other options 
Yeah, the, the medical world is failing us. The, the, the governments are failing us. And so uh, how can we share this message so people know there's options, there's ways to do things differently? Yeah, yeah certainly in the last couple of years, as, we, as we've spoken about that, you know, what what's happened has really woken a lot of people up and people are searching now for alternative um, medicines and or alternative ways of dealing with uh, their health because um, we all know that the government's got our best interests at heart but you know sometimes it's just what doesn't work out does it <laughs> so we'll leave it at that, shall we? <laughs> yeah <laughs> so yeah no I think it's uh it sounds really good and and I've slowly been learning I've I've been listening to um, a lot of different people um, one in particular I won't mention her name but she's very well known and she's also banned so <laughs> um, uh, it, it seems that you know as we treat ourselves better we can we when you say you know you're more intuitive and and all that sort of stuff it's it's like when you're when you're being healthier with yourself you sort of get rid of that brain fog that a lot of the foods and whatever we consume um clog up our our mental state so um yeah it makes you uh, more in tune with yourself and your surroundings so i think that's really cool Absolutely. And, and, you know, I think it's something we had a quick chat before, like really being aware of the holistic approach of things. Yeah. So I've got, I've got clients, they come and say, I meditate four hours a day. Oh, God bless you. <laughs> you know, it's wonderful. You can meditate four hours a day. But if you don't go and deal with your traumas, if you don't deal with your pain, then the meditation is just like a plaster. Mm -hmm. Or if you do yoga every day and then drive back home and get Big Mac on, on the way home for dinner, it's like, well, where is, where is, we need to bring things into alignment on all aspects of our life and of our existence, right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, and I, I, I want to do better for myself, so. Um, yeah, you have the right hands. So let's go. Yeah, <laughs> if I if I can get something out of this and it helps me, I'm cheering. <laughs> it can happen. Yeah. So. What kind of people come to you? Uh, what's sort of a, a typical client for you? What are they looking for um, out of what your practice does? Look, it's a variety of different things. I have been working with people with uh, stage 4 cancer. I have been working with people with heart disease. I have been working with mothers that are at the end of it, with, with, you know, just being burned down uh, from the craziness of life. Uh, I've been working with suicidal people uh, that were ready to just end this and forget about anything. Um, a lot of women that wanted to improve their relationships, wanted to understand themselves more. I think what's happening now Many of us that on some level are a bit more open, we are starting to ask questions, you know, am I, is this all there is? What can I do better? Like, okay, there is, if I'm fighting with my husband every day, is that really the best I can do? And, and, and then people come back to themselves and say, okay, I need help because I see, I understand that something is out of whack and that's not really the reality I want to experience. So it's a little bit of everything and um, children, oh my goodness, I absolutely love working with kids because they are so responsive and we can see changes immediately. Yeah, as adults we have stories, we put the boundaries, we, we, put, the, we put the little defensive mechanisms in and, and just doubts and whatever questioning but kids they didn't have none of that they just slap yeah i take it and 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 they automatically we can rebalance their field rebalance their chakra systems and bring them back to to who they are without all the drama 
that they might be absorbing. So yeah, it's a mixture of different things. Um, but what I'm really passionate about is working with mothers because I feel they are like the pillar of everything. Yeah, the mamas. If they go down, everything is fucked. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 you know, the kids go down the hill, the husbands, the partners, whatever it is, the family is in meltdown. So that's my real passion, just to really focus on the, on the mothers, provide support. What are sort of the main strategies... I guess that's a very vast array of different things that you de- um, work with. So um, it's really hard to sort of pinpoint what kind of strategies you use. Um, I was, maybe we should talk about diet um, and and what sort of things you promote for certain things, if we could go into that. and Okay. Yeah, look, why... Uh, why- why don't we do a little detour just for a couple of minutes and maybe tune into what energy is all together, right? I okay. think it's really yep. important to understand because everything has energy. This glass of water I've got here, it's got energy. The apple you eat has energy. Um, a big mug that some people choose to eat. I don't know why I'm choosing that. That's like the worst thing. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's why. That's got a certain amount of energy too, yeah. So if we think... Um, what is the energy? Combination of sound, of light, that creates certain color, frequency, sacred geometry, and from there we create matter. Yeah, and depending on how we are fueling ourselves, our temples, our bodies, that's how we vibrate. Yeah, and, 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 and there's one rule, golden rule, that I absolutely love from uh, my understanding of energy is like attracts like. So if we are radiating and we are like these beautiful, vibrant beings, we just attract most of the time, not always, most of the time, um, just, uh, just beautiful people into our world, beautiful experiences, opportunities, all that. So we live in expression. Talking about yeah. the law of attraction sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah, which is based on energy. Um, and then and then um, just lost it for a moment. <laughs> I thought you'd paused, um, actually. I thought your screen froze. <laughs> <laughs> no, my brain froze. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, and so, uh, okay, back to energy. So, so if... We take it back to food. So that's a, like a quick snatch up, yeah? We take it back to food. Um, obviously, the more our bodies are alkaline, the more and, and hydrated. I think 97% of, of population is dehydrated. Yeah. Wow. wow. So water, water is, and not just water, like tap water and all the, that's, that's no oh, go, no, right? No we all understand water. that, that filters and, <laughs> or spring water would be perfect world, but how many of us can um, afford that in the, in, in the cities? It's tricky, but so yeah, clear water. Um, there's a rule of thumb, I will share this little wisdom for every 22 kilos of our body weight that we have, we should drink a little of water. So we all can do the maths. So I'm, um, let's say, I don't know, 60 kilos. So that means I should drink at least three liters of water. And that doesn't mean coffee. It doesn't drink. It doesn't mean soft drinks. It doesn't mean, you know, any of the other stuff, like pure, clean water. And that's just the essentials that our body needs in order to function better. So once we boost that up, the brain starts being more efficient. Yeah, so the brain fog will become a bit less yep. our digestive system will be uh, more like um, supported so elimination becomes smoother so things will leave the body much more we get rid of toxins of the dense matter from our bodies as well our skin becomes clearer so that's like the basic stuff right and all then just from water uh, yeah all just from water to start with, absolutely. That's essential. So if every single one of us start drinking their amount of water based on this little formula I just shared, watch the magic happen. 
Yeah. How much water do you drink, do you reckon? Like, how does that resonate with you? You can't ask those sort of questions. <laughs> I ask the questions. <laughs> 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 well, Does not it make a, sense? that's clearly Does not it enough. <laughs> so, um, I have been <laughs> listening uh, to oh, I can't remember her last name, but Barbara. Um, Barbara, oh, there's a lot of videos with her uh, talking about different things, and one of them was water. And she said, You can drink all the water in the world, but as long as it's um, and, and unless it's getting into your cells, it's not really doing much. So um, she says that like Celtic salt is good for that and um, like very minimal too. Like, I mean, Celtic salt's quite chunky, isn't it? I haven't actually bought any yet, but that's on the list of things to do. Um, but she's saying, you know, having that Celtic salt will um, allow the water to absorb into your cells. Is that correct? Hundred percent, hundred percent. That was my next point. So thank you for jumping in. We are already in sync here. Hey. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah. So the water doesn't just flush through us; it will actually nourish the cells, flush out all the toxicity that the cells are holding onto, and then just can function better and more vibrant. Yeah, hundred percent. Cool. So, mm. in regards to when you said fasting, um, so this is. Uh, like, would this be a really good opportunity for someone that wants to fast for maybe a day or even two days or however long um, and they're only going to be intaking water is to try that and, and possibly just see what the results are from actually absorbing water because I'm actually keen to try it. Look, um, we are all very different. We are all on very different levels of our health. And I would, if there is, um, I would probably start adjusting the life, the diet, right? So instead of going, okay, tomorrow I wake up and I'm starting water fasting. Cool, you can do that. But it's going to be painful. It's going to be much more uncomfortable. And so I believe in this like gentle approach where we can, okay, what can I cut out of my diet that doesn't serve me? Uh, is there any processed foods that I don't need, you know, chips and, and, and heavy meat diet, um, dairy, all that stuff? Um, is there too much sugar, you know, um, that I can let go of? Um, is there any white flour and white carbs that I can let go of? Yeah, they call it the, what do they call it? The white poison. Uh, so anything that's kind of white, can we bring it back? That's just way too processed. White sugar, white flour, right. all that. Is, there's no nutrients in that. So it's just fillers that give us absolutely nothing. So once we, and zero energy, right? So again, we want everything that's vibrant, that's alive, that's beautiful, nourishing. So once we can, I would start with that. And then boost up the water intake, of course. How many coffees do I drink a day? How much? alcohol you know there was a time where i would be sculling bottle of wine every night every night just to fucking survive you know that's like <laughs> many high lifetimes ago um that was my survival mechanism now if i have a glass of wine once every three months that's a miracle so so let's let's like write it all down where, where am i at right now and instead of jumping straight into fasting I would start eliminating. And then on the other hand, how can I add more fresh fruits and vegetables, uh, cold pressed juices, more water, um, you know, like whole grains, beautiful seeds and nuts, and bring that into balance. Smoothies are an excellent way to nourish our bodies, right? Uh, so I would start with that and maybe give it a couple of weeks. Yeah. Uh, just an uh, opportunity to re re rebalance. And that on its own is going to bring beautiful results. Um, there's something that I'm really, really sold on is uh, colon cleanse, you know, scraping, allowing as a mixture that I share with my clients and we scrape out the insides of our gut. That's like for years and years and years and years. It's just accumulating this sticky little gooey thing that's stuck on the lining of the gut. And then what happens, all the nutrition that we what we want to give to our body and we are, we've got the best intentions once we're on the right track then, it just cannot be absorbed because of all that um, 
pluck, right? Like the ba- it creates a barrier. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so once we go through this colon cleanse process, which is a four-day journey, journey or could be thirty-day journey, depends on people how quick or how slow they want to take it. Um, accompanied with things like enemas, just flushing out the build-up matter inside of our gut, again, supporting our body to be a bit more efficient. Um, then we create a really beautiful environment because there's nothing worse. You know, again, energy is pulsating, right? It's, it's, like, the, it's like the law of the universe, this expansion and contraction, and that's what we are. But if we are like just... <clears throat> Nothing is moving. I need to have three coffees in the morning to be able to go to toilet or laxity. So whatever. It's like that's fucking stagnation. There's yeah. no flow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And and again, I think many of us can resonate in different stages of our life. And and so that will help. That will help to bring the body back into its natural way of being. Um and then I would probably go into the water fasting. Yeah. So it's look different and different people, different approaches. Um, if there is any health conditions, that would be different way of looking at it as well. And yeah, yeah. So just going back, rewinding to the fresh produce and stuff like that. I think it's important to bring up that you know uh, more and more mainstream places are bringing out food with you know that that are sprayed in pesticides and and uh, there's other things that are going on in the world today that um you know they're coating them in certain things that aren't good for you and i mean you you can generally wash your vegetables pretty good um but would i would it be recommended that you find a, a fresh produce place that's organic or i know it's it's tough because um, a lot of that is more expensive and um, it, people find that hard. Like, I mean, I tried keto and it wasn't cheap, so it wasn't really easy to stick to. So, And I find, you know, if, if I want to go and buy vegetables and stuff on a budget, you're just not going to be able to afford, like, full organic stuff like that. So um, yeah. it's, I hear you. It, it is tough. It is, and, and, and especially nowadays, and everything is going through the roof. Um, I personally cannot always uh, afford organic foods, uh, fruits and veggies. There is, a, there is a certain, they call it dirty bunch, dirty dozen, sorry, uh, which are like things like um, griffy, lean, um, Leafy green, so my goodness, I just put it all the way around. Uh, leafy green veggies, yeah, like spinach or silver beet, that type of stuff. Um, uh, or strawberries. What else is there? Um, I can't think now, but um, it's very easy to Google. It's changing every year too. Um, if you can get at least those organic. Everything I buy, and, and I love um, farmer's markets. So we've got oh, yeah, farmers' markets are the here. best. They are great. Oh, great. so I think so, what you're trying to say is the, the odd bunch is it's just um, fruit and veg that doesn't – it sort of – it's like the reject pile because it doesn't look the same. Like it's a, a mangled-looking banana or something like that. Like it's a odd bunch sort of thing. Is that is that what you're saying? Um, no. What I was referring to is called Dirty Dozen. And that's that's specific um, a specific group of fruits and vegetables that are much more sprayed and uh, with pesticides and also absorb it heaps more. Right. So uh, things like strawberries are just saturated with chemicals, and no matter what you do, it's very tricky to get it, get rid of it. Um, look, honestly. Honestly, the world we live in, it's really hard to stay away from toxins, right? The air, the water, the food. So um, let's go one step back. What I would recommend, wash all your produce in apple cider vinegar. Combo of apple cider vinegar and water. Rinse it, let it sit for a couple of minutes. Rinse it again, let it dry, and put it in your fridge. Yeah. So that's the, the, I don't know if um, you are familiar with Don Tolman. He's an amazing um, 
amazing man, full of wisdom. He has done the research with his friend, who is a scientist, and they took a bunch of organic produce and then measured their frequency. Um, then take, then they took a bunch of conventional, washed it in apple cider vinegar, and what they ended up with was exactly the same result. So obviously. The components will be st the structure of it because it has grown with the with the pesticides on it will yeah. be slightly different, but at least we are releasing a bit of the toxicity. So that's how I'm playing it. That's what brings peace to my heart. That's all you can you can only do your best. Absolutely. You know you can only do your best. Like you said, you're not never going to be able to get away from it. So, the, I mean, the more work that you put into keeping it as reduced as you possibly can is probably the best way so and then look is it is it is it better to have an apple that is not classified organic which that on its own that could be conversation alone you know mm -hmm. or better to have no apple at all right yeah 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 so and and look to me i've made this switch a very long time ago and to me this is my health insurance mm. so if i pay a little bit extra for fresh stuff then the packaged supermarkets <laughs> what three minute three minute noodles for dinner instead of broccoli and beautiful mushrooms or whatever i would make for for our dinner this is my health insurance i never get sick i unless i overdo it and i know i'm just being stupid there's, there's no way i don't get sick no matter what viruses are floating around it's just keeping it pure right yeah and look, uh, this, this is why I'm interested in this sort of stuff because I need to start doing it myself. I'm not the healthiest eater, so you know, um, any inf information and tips. And I mean, this is the ba basic stuff, you know. And I, I still don't. I struggle with it every day. So you want to, right? Because we lost the way. There's so much noise out there. So can we just boop, delete? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Basic. Factory How did reset. That? How did that Families used to live, you know, our grandmas. I grew yeah. up in the Czech Republic in a little village. You would have farms, potatoes, and growing our own shit. And there would be pigs and cows and sheep. And so just fresh, real food and taking it back to basics. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And it's like it, the indoctrination and the, the advertising and, and all that sort of stuff is just so persistent these days and and it's you know it, it's a it's a real struggle to to really pull yourself up on it so well for me anyway so yeah i well, mean now it, we it just takes awareness, right? well so i mean we, with, we create change yeah Simple. yeah when the stuff that you're doing is really helping people to prepare themselves for um, a future journey as well like it's um, like changing mindset and stuff like that you know to 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 love yourself better and i love oh it my. oh my god yeah and you know it's huge it's huge for people and i think that's that's the cause of everything loving ourselves loving ourselves yeah the conditioning you know how many of us grew up in families that love was not present as much as our parents tried, God bless them, of course, um, they, they may be not able and capable. The systems, you know, the education, the countries, different cultures. And so we kind of create this, this perception of ourselves. I'm not worthy. I'm not deserving. I need to give to everybody else. I'm the last one in the, in the food chain. And then we end up these broken beings, right? The breast cancer is a beautiful woman I worked with recently. Had a stage called, uh, four cancer, breast cancer. It's all about nourishment, all about giving back to ourselves, loving ourselves. And this woman was carrying generations and generations of pain and trauma and just living in that really dense masculine energy. Yeah, and just going and forcing and controlling and oh, what is that creating, right? And so that's that's other part of this journey of healing, just releasing all that, the old pain, the old perceptions of ourselves, of 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 um, it's like this blueprint that we become, mm. a false conception, 
as soon as we we are conceived, we start taking perception of our mother, and let's create who we are. You know, it's very and interesting. Right? Yeah, so it's interesting. deep. I don't know where you want to go, but uh, maybe too much information to start with. But, yeah, yeah, it's it's fascinating. It's fascinating, and once we understand it, then we can kind of see that nothing that we do is our fault, right? We have certain perception based on someone else's experience. Yeah, and and then can we let that go? And then love ourselves that more understanding who we are understanding what our beliefs are what our way of beings are and yeah this is actually something that i see a lot today is people comparing themselves to others when they're not realizing that their own shit is their own shit like you can't walk around comparing yourself to other people because it's not you're not on their journey like you're on your mm -hmm. own journey you know, you need to walk your own line and and do what's right for yourself. You know, you can't go comparing yourself to others. It's just Absolutely. not not healthy. We can get inspired, right? Absolutely. Like you well, I mean, you're you can doing some awesome shit. Definitely like, yeah, take the good. Okay, I can be like you. Yeah, well, we can definitely learn from each other. But we can't we can't feed off uh, like the negativity, the negative parts. We need to just do our own thing but definitely learn from people like mm -hmm. i'm learning from you right now <laughs> Yay. oh absolutely and comes back to the energy again right like the negativity what you said so if i give you an example um i've got a little boy and when he was maybe about two three i would just get so angry for him doing little shits like throwing things or painting on the walls and blah 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 and i would get just lose my shit i'm like what's going on because to and back then i was on different journey myself as well uh, <laughs> so now i i love myself for that you know then not knowing not understanding i just had to go and go through this whole process of forgiveness and understanding but oh. anyway um there was so much anger and i'm like where is this coming from and so I went and dug deeper and deeper and deeper and took me to my own childhood, to what my dad used to do to us and how he was creating the energy environment in my own family. And if I liked it or not, then I just kind of carried it within myself. And yeah. so I had to start, okay, what are my triggers? Start taking responsibility and paying attention. Yeah. And now? Cool as cucumber, like if he's going crazy, I join him. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's it's really beautiful. It's really beautiful to own our own shit, understand, and just like say, okay, it's not always pretty to look into the mirror and see certain yeah. aspects of ourselves. But once you can face it, and um, once we can kind of own it, then we can create change on all aspects of our life. Yeah, and going back to the forgiveness thing, like I think <laughs> I found for myself a few years ago that forgiving myself was the hardest thing to do. And um, that, that, that was such a struggle, you know, because you know that, that you, you've done something wrong and to be able to forgive yourself is immense, you know. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's very powerful. It is. And then and then taking it back to help if we don't. So um, that's a, if we hold on to grudges and stuff, you know, anger, resentment, all that, that's the frequency or energies that get stored in our liver. As we were talking about toxicity before, yeah. And so if we it affects the ability of the body to filter the toxins. And then it becomes hard. Often you see people getting getting uh, liver issues. Sometimes they become blind because the meridian lines for liver are in our eyes. Eye cancer as well. I had a conversation with someone recently. Wow. Um, 
you know and so if we're holding on to it it's all connected that's what we need to understand it's all connected the energy the crutches the the the, 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 the everything is connected so whatever is going on the outside is affecting our physical body yeah so we've got different layers of energy or our emotions our feelings our thoughts uh, it's all creating this temple that we carry around with ourselves yeah so what it really all boils down to is just look after yourself. <laughs> Eat well, look after yourself, and don't be an asshole. <laughs> and ask for help, right? Oh, absolutely, was... yeah. That's that's why I'm out here doing this is because, yeah. you know, if we don't ask for help, and I'm I'm still guilty of it. I still don't ask for help. I'm, you know, I'm an indoctrinated guy. <laughs> so. You know. uh, yeah, and that's you. You know, you guys, you guys. That's yeah. the ego. That's the ego talking. Yeah, that's right. Or do you a certain way, really? Do you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, totally not perfect here. <laughs> and that's okay. You're not meant no. to be perfect. No, I'm no, not I know that. You're just meant to learn from our experiences, so we can come that one little bit better than we were yesterday and mm. then it's the other little bit so it's in small little bites and and as a you know i think many people feel anxious and 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 depressed because they feel they need to do things on their own and there's communities were destroyed the villages that we used to have right to raise our kids to to support each other it's it's been destroyed it's thanks god it's coming back now it's uh, in some way but still right so um, I think these conversations are beautiful so we can all realize that it's okay. It's okay. I don't have my shit figured out. I mm. can actually be supported through it so I can then be the guiding light to somebody else. And that's that beautiful ripple effect. I think it's really important to, to, to bring up um, your environment as well. It's, um, you know, we, we get home from work or whatever we're doing and, we get straight on our phones and it's just doom and gloom like the whole the whole time you would we we're, we're in a constant battle of the, our surroundings attacking us and there's it, it a lot of cases it's deliberate and you know uh, it's targeted towards people you know i mean we, you've got so many distractions these days that uh, that fill your news feed on Facebook if you're always on your phone and it's just it creates it creates this barrier or this um, I don't know what to call it but it just it brings you down lowers your vibration pretty much and then you start to get depressed because everything's all sad and then you decide oh fuck it's not worth it you know like and that sort of stuff brings you down as well so I mean, I've I've been making a bit of an effort lately to to slow down on on Facebook and and watching videos and reels and and all that sort of stuff because I mean, all that sort of stuff is designed to just give you this constant dopamine hit. Um, the way that they're structured, like the short clips, it's it's like every every five to thirty seconds you're getting a climax. In, in a video and sometimes it doesn't even come like the um, like the video will be someone of, of making something and then all of a sudden before you see this the, the finished product the video will stop and like you're building yourself up to this um, this sort of climax and then it just disappears so then you scroll mm -hmm. onto the next video to try and substitute that and and then that one gives you what you need and you're like oh I just want more I just want more and you just keep swiping and swiping. And now I found myself swiping for hours and hours mm -hmm. and just watching garbage when I could have been learning something different. So I'm. It's about my boundaries, isn't it? Like anything. It is self control. Yeah. Self discipline. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. And so, you know, like for me, my home is my sanctuary. 
people walk in here and and they're like wow it feels so peaceful and then that's what i treasure that's what i consciously create i've got plants around the house i've got salt lamps i've got candles i get flowers from time to time and it's just like i consciously choose to create beautiful inviting inviting loving space where my family feels comfortable yeah and we feel this is a safe space to be um sure be music you know music beautiful music and phone having it's so addictive of course i found that myself too so what's my boundaries if i need to go on facebook after work well let's do it an hour 40 minutes whatever it is and then chuck it off put it on airport uh, um, the yeah, plane mode, mode thingy and <laughs> it's my technical knowledge <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and and it's sometimes you know before things become second nature and our default state it takes conscious effort like anything so now we have awareness of certain things right so i choose to i choose to implement this little curfew for phones i choose to drink more water i choose to whenever i feel i want to get into that oh life is just fucking painful okay no maybe not maybe that's just something old playing up yeah i maybe what if i just take a few deep breaths and focus on the beautiful sunshine outside. And like fake it till you make it, and then it becomes <laughs> our, our. Then you default. become a pro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And look, that's that's just. Oh my goodness! I could sit here forever. Like the amount of stuff that we get to clear with people by really work, working on the energetics, right? That's, 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 um, it's priceless. So all these little tips become so much more powerful once we can allow the conditioning, the, tra the, the pain, the trauma that many of us carry to go. What and are, that's... Sorry, mm. carry on, carry on. Well, then, then it kind of stops being our identity. It stops being that who we are, yeah? Like I've always been uh, this woman that hated the world and, and I always had to work hard and I always had to get approved by other people and I always needed to give it blah, 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 blah. Old story. Yeah. Once I let go of all the pain, it's like, ooh, you get this clean canvas. You can start again with anything you want. Right. <laughs> so when you hear out there, we are creators of our reality. This is what I'm talking about, right? We create who we are once you let go of the old. It comes with the physical body, comes with our mind, comes with our emotions, comes with everything else. Yep. Um, I did have a question. Um, what was it? Oh, yeah. So when uh, somebody comes in, and uh, let's come up with a scenario. Someone has, we'll, we'll just go with the basic depression, right? Mm -hmm. um, what are, are sort of some of the questions that you would ask to try and find your way around what's going on? How, how would you sort of go through a, um, a session? Yeah. So the first, the first time is really about understanding where... Um, is this individual client coming from yeah so i always go back to the childhood i always go back to the origins of our being as we talked about before and then we get a very clear understanding of where they're at um sometimes there might be some significant events happening in people's life that would bring trauma um with depression especially anxiety um we work with the chakra system, which is the energetic systems of our body. Each of the chakra governs certain systems, bodily systems, uh, like the digestive, the reproductive, the brain function, the skin, whatever, all that we talked about before. Um, and they are responsible also for certain areas of our life. So the root, for example, is that survival center. That's when that is forming, that is from conception to the one year of our life. And often I feel a lot of fear. There's no flow going in, people holding on to the pain. And what the root chakra, you know, like for in, in, in um, modern world, like fear, let's say money, 
the survival, right, in, in our world. It's, we don't need to run away from wild animals, but we need to pay our rent. We need to be able to have roof over our head for our children, for our families. And so that starts building up energetically inside. And that's when people feel really anxious because they can't ground into earth and the energy can't connect to earth, which is our like anchor point here in this existence. I don't want to go too far into into a different sphere, so please call me back if it gets a bit too woo -woo. <laughs> Because it's not. It's absolutely fascinating and beautiful, but I don't want to confuse anyone. Um, and so that's what I see in people holding on to these fears, a lot of fears, a lot of, um, lot of old pain yeah, that gets hold in. And so once we get, for example, I've got a client I'm working with at the moment for, for a few years. She's been on antidepressants. And she would be having extreme anxiety. She can't get into public. She would start shaking. And so we were working together exactly with this, like removing, opening up the field. Yeah, so all the old, all the old she's been carrying. And she's not even aware of what it is. But it comes up through uh, the sessions. And then she's feeling better. We had three sessions. She's planning trip to overseas. You know, before she wouldn't be able to walk outside of the house because she would get shaky and she would start worrying what will people think about her, yeah? Oh, wow, so, that's amazing. What a turnaround. Absolutely. And, and it's possible for all of us. Possible for all of us. So it's just understanding that we can let that all go. You said before the fear, but she doesn't know what it is. Mm. How... I, I guess it's just communication, isn't it? Is is just in that moment asking what's on their mind, or how do you identify uh, what it is? How do you get around to that? So um, that comes, I guess, to a little bit of my gifts. Yeah, that I can tune into people's field and just feel. So, so this lady in particular, she was a bit of a hard cookie because she wouldn't share much. She'd be very secretive, she's very protected, yeah? All these walls around. She doesn't trust people. She doesn't. So and especially for the first time we met, she's like, no, nah, I just tell you very limited. But once I feel in, I know exactly what's going on. Yeah, that's, I don't know, That's that's just part of, why I'm doing what I'm doing because I'm good at it now yeah. and I can I can see what's going on and we don't need to understand it because once we shift it she feels better right and she comes back so we can go deeper because every week every two weeks whenever she chooses to go it's it's like she's expanding and there's less and less and less of anxiety and then from there we start changing the beliefs okay before oh god I couldn't get out of the house and I'm like, oh, man, what if I play? What if I go for a walk around the block and see? What if I go and do a little shopping and feel good, right? It's like, oh, the world is not a scary place. Maybe I can trust a little bit more and, and just go exploring a little wider. And it's all connected, right? It's all connected. So um, some people come here. They say, Pavla, heal me. I just lie down on the table. You heal me. Why can't I just lie here for eight hours, go home and be a new man? <laughs> Actually, I nearly slapped the man because it's like, where's your responsibility? I can't change the way you do things. I can't change the way you think. Yeah. You can give experience and we all need to do the work, right? Some people just want it handed to them on a platter. Yeah, and now, yeah. well, that's never going to work. No, no, that's it's not. Entitlement. That's that um, That's that society that the system is building. Everything is handy to us. Everything is instant, within seconds. We don't have to work for anything anymore. It's yeah. just too fucking easy. It's like, no, we need to end things. If we want change, if we want transformation, it's hard work, mm. but it's so freaking worth it. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've just got to put the hard work in. <laughs> but so, then again, it comes with intention, right? So why am I, am I, for an example, client I worked with um, last week, I got her onto that colon cleanse, which involves four days of fasting and just eating this mixture thing. And she was freaking out. And it's like, well, what if we flip it around? You are not depriving of yourself of food for four days. You are actually giving your body opportunity to heal. 
so it can nourish you and give be be, be a bit more functional and operational when you are back in business, right? Four days. What is four days compared to three hundred and sixty-five, right? Four days of stillness when we just rest and make sure we we kind of let everything to recharge and detox. So everything is intention. Everything is intention. So where do you think the, the starting point is the food? Start cutting out what's not good for you. Yeah. Um, and then yeah. once that's sort of implemented, you can do your your cleansing stuff. Um, or you could do that at the same time, I suppose, couldn't you? Um, yeah, yeah, look. If for anything, maybe, why don't we start with the values, right? Why is my health important? So having the why, once you have the why, then once things get hard, you know, I want my yeah. freaking whatever bar of chocolate that yeah. I'm used to having every Friday afternoon. Oh, no, no, whatever, coffee. <laughs> I don't know. We that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> once we have the why, yeah, because I want to be like just the fittest I've ever been. Yeah. Or I want to just be healthy so I can climb mountain worst, whatever yeah. our work is. So have the purpose. Having the purpose. Have the purpose first. Mm. Yeah. And then and and then um, give the fasting too. Three days on water will reset your body. Just give it a nice little change. Ten days on water, the whole system gets a whole, like. New, new, new body. Everything renews. Ten days Everything. fasting. Is that what you mean? Ten days water fasting. Ten days water fasting. Mm. Wow. And, and and then if people are really battling with serious shit like cancers and and so that's that's going even deeper. Yeah. And and joined with and and it works. People have the Don Tolman I mentioned before. He's been doing this for fifty years. Or more. Wow. He's, he's now following two of his sons, actually, are following having retreats in Bali. There is a place in Melbourne that opened last year. And there are people are healing. But of course, the big pharma is just suppressing it. They've been under attack a lot. Um, I wonder why. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Awesome, awesome conversation. I, I loved it. That was yes, so please. good. <laughs> yeah, that's a really good way to kick it back off again. I really love it. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. yeah. What an honor. So, yeah, keeping it simple too and tiny little steps, one at a time, one at a time. And, you know, if anybody's got questions, just get in touch. I'll, I'll guide you through it. And Yeah, that'll be cool. I'd love to have you back on again as well. And uh, we can go over yeah. some different things and... <laughs> We can talk about whatever, like it's, yeah, such a good conversation. Um, I'm glad, thank you. Yeah. Well, Pavla, it's been amazing. Thank you so much. And thank you for being the first person back on the podcast. Yay! Uh, I, think we, I think we nailed it. <laughs> yeah. and here, here I was saying I was nervous and all that, so it, it flowed pretty well. I was really happy with it, so... Yeah. Amazing work. Yeah, you smashed it. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, until next time, folks. See you later. Bye.